Chapter 5, Motivation at Work. Motivation and work behavior. Motivation is something that um, uh, we're looking to get. And what's interesting is it's the process of arousing and sustaining, sustaining being the key word. For motivation to be successful, it needs to be sustaining and goal-oriented. We're going to talk about a lot of different motivational theories in this chapter that look at internal, process, and external. Internal needs. Max Weber had a theory that worked with the internal needs, as did Sigmund Freud, psychoanalysis. External incentives. Adam Smith talked about self-interest. Frederick Taylor about cooperation between management and labor. Interest, interestingly, a lot of the employee recognition programs we have in our companies today kind of go back to Smith and Taylor's original theories. Okay, one theory that you may be familiar with is Maslow hierarchy of needs. It means we're motivated based on our needs and our needs fall into the five categories. And the pyramid form goes from psychological needs up to self-actualization. As you complete one of the levels, you will move up to the next level and you're motivated to get into that level. Theory X and Theory Y. We see Maslow's hierarchy kind of split into Theory X and Theory Y. In summary, McGregor's Theory X means that managers assume that people want to be directed, that they lack the ambition, they won't do it without the direction, and they tend to be more of a in-your-face type manager. Theory Y uh, managers believe that people are motivated and want to be motivated and will work on their own so you're giving them more um, um, participation of active direction such that they can take and lead on their tasks. Elderfer's EGR theory, he kind of basically took Maslow's hierarchy and put it into three categories, existence, relatedness, and growth. Again, against Maslow's hierarchy, those are the ERG classifications. You're motivated depending on where you are and what you need. McClellan's need theory means that we have motivation based on certain needs. Is it achievement, for power, for affiliation? This gives you a summary of the four different motivational need theories we looked at. Maslow, McGregor, Aldifer, McClellan, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, McGregor's XY Theory, Aldifer's EGC Theory, and McClellan's Need Theory, Achievement, Power, and Affiliation. Hersberg was another researcher that looked at the two-factor theory. He looked at people and said that there were different ways that people were motivated for satisfaction, but there was also a need to avoid discomfort and pain or not be dissatisfied. So there are certain things that you want to avoid pain or job dissatisfaction. They won't necessarily motivate you but there are certain things that will increase your job, job satisfaction based on motivation factors. Eustress, strength, and hope. 
These are some new ideas of motivation. Eustress is healthy normal stress. Another new idea of motivation theory is managing energy rather than time, somewhat like athletes. So basically there will be times when you're very engaged and there'll be times you're back in recovery. So, social exchange and the equity theory. Equity theory is kind of a social exchange where we're looking and being motivated, motiv motivated by our individual actions with our environment. Adam's theory of inequality. This makes a lot of sense to me. A lot of people will be more motivated based on seeing an inequity or having an unfairness than those that see equity and fairness. Inequity creates tension, which can lead to motivation to act. So in this theory, you'll have one individual, the person, and they'll compare to another person. And they're looking at how much did they put out and receive in their efforts and how much somebody else did. And it's that comparison with another individual. Nobody likes inequity. So there could be ways to resolve it. If you notice, these all have to do with change um, or some form of rationalization and exit. So if the inequity is something that is concerning, you will be motivated to do something to resolve that inequity. Some new perspectives. This is similar to what we just went over. You're sensitive to that relationship between people. Benevolence, if they know the ratio isn't equal, they're okay with it. And there's entitled that feel that they deserve to always be better. Groom's expectancy theory of motivation. This goes back to being motivated by something we want. Valence is the term for the value that we put on what our reward is. So we're going to have an expectancy that we believe effort leads to performance, and we'll believe that performance is connected to the rewards. So you see effort performance, reward, and you ask the questions below. What are some motivational problems with the expectancy theory? You may not think the effort and performance have a relationship. You don't think that how well you do something will result in a reward, or you're not interested in the reward. This would be like somebody saying, I'll give you a keychain, you may have a hundred of them, so you don't have that value or valence on that reward. Expectancy theory tends to think of that self-interest, but there are people that are more mature and they do it more for altruistic or for the benefit of things. Very interesting point about our theories that we just reviewed. Our theories were developed, practiced, and tested by Americans. They may not at all hold up culturally. There will be situations where they will do the exact opposite. As a manager, what are some ways to motivate people? Coaching, training, rewards, 